Hey guys, welcome to Whiskey and Sunshine Off Grid. This is our very first vlogcast. So vlogcast is basically a vlog podcast, kind of mushed together. And so that's what we're going to do. So we're taking a few questions that we got from our um, live that we did the other night. And we're just going to, because not everybody watches and uh, the lives, we thought we would kind of make a video about it and answer those questions for you guys that don't watch it. Does that make sense? I think so. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense at all. Anyway, so let's get to it. What do you want to do for the first question? Yes. <laughs> that was the question and the answer. That was the question and the answer. Okay. So, uh, well, let's do the off-grid, because we're Whiskey and Sunshine off-grid, let's do the one about um, the off-grid living. So, what's the best thing about living off-grid? You first. Um, I like the freedom and the privacy. We pretty much get to do what we want without anybody bothering us. I mean, not that we were doing stuff that was out of the ordinary in our old neighborhood or anything like that, but you don't have people staring at you all the time like your uh, reality TV personality. I guess uh, we missed that so much when we moved here, we decided that we'd probably, I don't know, start a YouTube channel <laughs> so people could watch what we did. <laughs> Which seems kind of silly, uh, but you we're know. We're a little nutty, who knows. But yeah, I like, I like the independence and the freedom of being off-grid. I agree, yes, yep. I like that too. And the worst thing about living off grid? You first. <laughs> oh crap, I didn't think about this too much. Uh, we talked about it, but I didn't process it. Um, I guess the worst thing for me about living off grid may be um, the housework part of it as far as, and I touched on this in the live, um, you know, you can only have so much power to be able to run your washer and do your dishes so your water pump runs, things like that. So I guess it would be hard, like, when I'm ready to do the dishes, that would be one of the things. Like, you know, I have to check the power first. If we don't have enough, I either have to run the generator so that I can do that stuff or wait till a sunny day and we're better charged. Uh, so I guess it's... You know, when we were on grid, you don't really have to think about that. You can just do it whenever. Um, and when you're off grid, you got to think more about your power consumption and uh, your use of it. So that's kind of mine. Yeah, it's just like uh, a bank account, but not a credit card. You can't borrow against it. You have what you have and that's all you have. And you, you have to set limits on your voltage, how far you're going to pull it down. And once you reach that, reach that limit, you either stop using power or you have to start the generator or, or something. That's all, the only choice you have. Right. Um, that really doesn't bother me all that much. I guess um, the part that was hard for me to get used to was being the Mr. Fix-It, I guess, of the house. Everything here is my responsibility. If, if something goes, you know, if, if something breaks or something stops working, uh, I'm, I'm the electrician. Uh, it's, it's very hard to find electricians that know much about off-grid electricity or DC power. Um, I was fortunate. The, the people that installed this system had left some... Uh, business cards and some literature around here and we were able to get a hold of them and initially they uh, they helped me a lot with being able to uh, get my feet under me so that I was a little more confident with being able to just tear into you know electrical matters because it is different it's not like uh, you know regular good power you have to you have to pay attention there's a lot of things that are different and uh, it's just a, it's just a new thing, you know. And uh, once you're used to it, you, you kind of forget about it until you have have problems. We learned uh, fairly early on the uh, more or less what you'd call the 
soft spot or the wear items in our system. In our particular situation, I would say our uh, the things that probably go to hell the most often are charge controllers. And they're relatively cheap. The charge controller is not an expensive thing. Um, so we always have a backup one here in the gun safe, wrapped in foil all the time in the original packaging. And I've changed two or three of those, I guess, yeah. at, this, at this point. Yeah, we found that electrical storms that we had here, like this, was it the, might have even been the first summer that we lived here. Yeah, or the it might second. have been. Can't remember which one, but uh, they were very low and like in the air. I don't know how to explain it. It's probably not anywhere near that way, but- It was uh, one of the worst electrical storms we had around here yeah. in decades. We, we had a bunch of them. And it, uh, um, it cooked our charge controller. Yeah. And so I would say that's definitely the weak spot. People, yeah. people talk about, um, you know, what will happen if there's an EMP? Well, there are lightning arrestors and stuff on the system too. Um, the panels themselves, there isn't a whole lot of internal circuitry there. So uh, it's all, most of the stuff that, you know, the micro circuitry involved is within the house. It's uh, the charge controller, the inverter, all that stuff is protected once you get past the charge controller. Um, but that seems to be the weak spot because we haven't, we haven't had any problems with anything else. No. So like I said, we always keep at least one of those charge controllers brand new on hand all the time. I think they're a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars or something like that. Yeah. yeah. Well, they were, I don't know what they are now, but that's. Yeah. That's I, God were. knows. We haven't I, bought I one who knows, years. but, um, that, that has taken care of pretty much all of our problems. We've. Well, we've had other problems, but yep. all of the ones we had to hunt for, that and uh, bad connections. You know, there's uh, a million connections down there. If you count battery terminals and how everything wires together, everything's got to be, you know, right, spot on, perfect. For a long time, our, our uh, inverter charger didn't like our generator at all, and it would reject the power. So we couldn't charge our batteries from the generator, which that was no good at all. But uh, we were able to open up the acceptable parameters of the power for the inverter. And that allowed the generator in as a charger and it started working again. But I had to, I had to make a few phone calls about that one mm. to uh, Schneider support and uh, Moosehead Solar Power, the folks that actually put this system in yeah. originally. Luckily, we have phone numbers that we can call for help. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the other things that we had a problem with was the battery box <laughs> collapsed. Oh, That's yes. another issue when other people don't have power because of a storm or whatnot. You know, you could probably call work and tell them, you know, sorry, don't have power. Uh, can't can't leave or something and they're okay with that but when you live off grid and they have power and there's nothing wrong go there so they look at you like so you don't have power and it's like well no but i have this stuff i gotta do so we didn't have power because we had our battery box collapsed and uh yeah that didn't 24 batteries all the way to the floor yeah they all tipped over and some were leaking. It was, it was a disaster. Yep. Um, the people that built a battery box could have done a better job. We didn't realize how how soft it was. Otherwise, mm -hmm. I would have reinforced it originally. But, you but know. that is one of the other things that, you know, it's like, you know, that's your problem. Our problem, not your problem. Things still happen. <laughs> yeah, things happen here. Things happen here. And sure? living off-grid, um, you've kind of cut the cord from society in more ways than one is, you know, of course we, we don't have any payments. We don't have uh, all that stuff, but we also, if you ever look it up, it's hard to get, it's hard to get a loan on uh, off grid property. Most places won't finance it. Most places won't insure it. They're not even interested. We tell them we only have wood heat. They say that's not a viable heat source. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, yeah, for sure. You know, so I guess the hard part is conforming to society's, you know, perception of you know, where we stand. Uh, most people, if they came in the house and walked around, 
they'd never know without going in the basement that we were even off grid because right. everything looks just the same as everybody else's house. Or walking out by the solar panels. <laughs> what are those? Right. Well, <laughs> that's the other thing. You know, it's, it's, we're in kind of a different situation than a lot of people that live off grid. Our system is big enough and it was set up that way originally by the original owners so that uh, if you use it right, you're going to live a perfectly modern lifestyle. The only thing is you have to uh, self-regulate your power of gluttony, right. so to speak. Right. You can't uh, use use it like there's no end. Just thinking, well, the bill will just go up because you don't have a bill, but you're also not going to have any power either. And if you do that very often and you run it too low, you're damaging all kinds of components within your system, you know, whether it be your battery bank or uh, inverter charger or, or whatever. Um, yeah. So it's got its ups and its downs. It's not right. It's not uh, a cakewalk. We're always... I feel like there's more ups than downs, though. I Yeah, like I, I do, too. We have more ups than downs. And I mean, it's like stress, you know, the, you can be tired, you know, you can go work all day doing physical labor and go home and sleep and wake up and feel great. And you're not tired anymore. Or you can be mentally tired from stress and go home and sleep and wake up still tired. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't get that as much. Right. You know, this, this is more of a, a clean, clean kind of a situation. You I have mean, a way to de-stress here, definitely, um, and get away from it there. So anyway, thank you guys for joining our first uh, vlogcast. And if you have any questions, put them down in the comments. When we do this again, we'll come back through. We'll grab those questions and we'll do our next vlogcast and answer some of those questions that we can answer. We try to be upfront and honest about it. It is it is what it is. We just do what we do. and um, We'll try to make this more more serious, you know, because I realize some people, people actually may have... You know, you may be thinking about going off grid and, and want to know stuff, so. Yeah, I mean, I think we were pretty serious about some of the stuff. <laughs> we can be very serious about things, but. We goof around a lot. Um, um, we don't want to be total serious butts about it, you know. We like to joke around a little, but. Um, anyway, so just leave the questions, comments down in the comment section. Like, share, and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. We really appreciate it, guys. And anything else? <laughs> I, I don't think so. Think anything. No. All right. So we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye. Bye.